This is a carbon bass guitar, and that is a custom thumb rest I made for it some years ago. I wanted to have something that looked really neat. I made it out of steel, and I wanted to blue it and do engine turning on it. And I did it all with fairly basic processes, using a belt sander to do the radius. And then I put the little swirlies on there. I'll show you how to do that someday. Heat blued it. Doesn't that look cool? But today, I want to talk about doing those radii on the corners. Belt sander does a perfectly good job, but I want to use this as an opportunity to use a rotary table on a milling machine. Now, doesn't that look smart on that guitar? That is a neat looking thumb rest. First thing you need to do with a rotary table is you have to know the center of the arc that you're going to be cutting. So here we are measuring, and it turns out to be 7 16 I'm going to grab a special gauge to measure the radius of the original part. You could use a circle template to do this. Notice all those nooks and crannies on these things. This allows you to fit it into various places to measure all kinds of radii. And you hold a light behind it and see if any daylight comes through. That's how you check it. And notice, you could use the outside radius. Describe the part and then take it over to the belt sander and be done with it. But today, we're not going to do that. So I go over to the surface plate and I set a height gauge to a zero. And we're going to raise this height gauge to the radius we just measured. 375 thousandths. Keep going. Keep going. You can do it. 300. Oh, overshot. There we go. Now reach up and cinch that down before we lose it. All right. The tip of that thing is carbide. And it's sharp. We use that to scratch a beautiful line on the part. There it is. We do the same thing in the other direction. This is going to give us a perfect set of crosshairs because we need to find the center of the part and we'll line that up with the center of the rotation of the rotary table. Now let's set up the rotary table. We don't need this vise on our milling machine anymore. We'll loosen all those bolts, take it off. And yes, I did smack my finger when I took that off. Got to get this table nice and clean. Wipe everything down, look for burrs. You definitely don't want to have anything under that. Yeah, there we go. Clamp it down. And this is our rotary table. It's a small one. I believe it's six inches in diameter. And it has all these different knobs and fittings and doodads on it. When you first get one, it seems a little bit complicated. But when you figure it all out, it's not that bad. For each rotation of the knob, the table moves four degrees. I believe the precision of this will go down to 20 seconds on a veneer on that knob. When we unlatch that little latch and rotate the, the hand wheel out of the way, now the table free wheels can move it to whatever position we want then cam the hand wheel back into position. That re-engages the worm drive. And there we go. Now we first need to center the quill of the milling machine directly over the center of the rotary table. For this, we're going to use the stare at last word. There are better dial indicators out there today, but this is what your granddad used. And I think it's kind of a classy dial indicator. So that's what we're using today. And the idea here is we are going to put the dial indicator down in the center of the rotary table in that ground circle you see in the middle. And we're going to sweep that and make sure that the milling table is centered directly under the quill. So here I am 
just eyeballing it, moving the y-axis, kind of move the x-axis, line it up. It's looking pretty good. Get it down in there. And this gets to be a little fiddly. And what you're trying to do is make it so that as you turn this, the pointer doesn't move. Notice it's moving right now. So we're going to move the x-axis and y-axis with the hand wheels, little tiny bits, until we get this thing to the point where the needle doesn't move at all as we sweep the arc. We'll be able to spin it all the way around. Yeah, still got a little ways to go. Dial it in, dial it in. And it doesn't have to be on zero. It just has to be unchanging. That's all we care about. Now, what about when it's facing away from you? Just get a little mirror. And you'll notice that the dial is yellow on one side and white on the other. That helps keep you from making mistakes when you're looking in a mirror. Here we are. Lock them in. Zero it out. And just to keep us honest, move the table a little bit. Make sure that the needle moves by a few thousands. Make sure that the DRO numbers change by the same amount. Looks good. We're zeroed out. The quill is directly over the center of that table. Now we need to move the center of the part directly under the quill. And the way we do that, I'm going to use a thing called a wiggler. This is really neat. This Notice how it wiggles back and forth. And what you do is you spin it up and then use a sharpie and kind of bump it and then move the sharpie. And what happens is it sort of, you'll feel it, it clicks. And now it's perfectly aligned with the center of rotation. The machine's rotating, but you can't see it moving because it's absolutely aligned. And you take that sharp point on the end of the wiggler and you line that up with the lines that we drew on the part. We're going to do this by clamping the part down on the rotary table. Remember, the center of the wiggler is already directly over the center of the rotary table. We're just trying to get our part moved in place. So we put these little clamps on there. I put one for now. And this little table has these tiny slots, and it makes it a bit of a pain to get clamps in place. And I'm always having issues. Notice I have to put a piece of aluminum scrap underneath. And that's because we are going to cut the full height of the part, and I don't want to cut into the rotary table. And a little tap, tap, tap with a piece of brass. We're moving it in both directions as we, we line these lines up. And you see, we've got it lined up in one direction, lined up in the other. I use a powerful magnifying glass to do this, but the camera seems to be seeing it just fine. My eyes can't. And there, you notice the wiggler is directly over the scribe lines on the part. And as we rotate the rotary table, we see the wiggler doesn't move. Now we have to align the rotary angle. We have to make it so that the part is completely parallel to the front of the milling machine. And we do this with another dial test indicator. And we sweep it from one end to the other. And what I'm doing as I move the x-axis of the mill is I'm changing the rotation of the little rotary table by small increments. And try it again. Eventually, I want this needle to stay still as we go from left to right. And there we are. We're done. I get a Sharpie, and I put a line right on the table, right where I've stopped it. And notice I put that at 180 degrees. And this helps me not miss the mark when I'm rotating this. And I'm going to put a similar mark on 270. Just wash these off with alcohol when you're done. Always do a dry run with your setup. With a tiny rotary table like this, the clamps are going to get in the way of your cutter, of the, the quill. 
you have to move things around. In fact, this clamp setup, I changed like three times because I was bumping into the quill. And now it's just a matter of going between those two marked places on the rotary table and nibble, nibble, nibble. I've offset the x-axis by the amount we want for a radius plus half of the cutter. So it's 375 thousandths for the radius plus half of that quarter inch cutter, which is eighth of an inch. This means we're offset by 500 thousandths. And then I move out because we need to cut this corner. And so we nibble, 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 move the x-axis in by 10 thousandths. We do another pass, move the x-axis in another 10 thousandths. And it probably took me 10 passes before I finally got this done. Rotate, rotate. And when I'm still doing the corner, you'll notice I don't have to go all the way between the extremes on the 90 degree arc that I'm doing. By the time we get closer in, we'll do the full 90 degrees. Notice we've gotten further along. It's looking pretty good. Look at the beautiful tool marks it leaves. One thing I'm going to point out is that the wiggler doesn't allow us to get the precision that I would like if I were doing this for something where this was going to be the finish cut. The reason is you're going to be off by a thousandth or so with the wiggler. You're doing it by sight. And notice the termination, the beginning and the end of this arc. It looks really nice, but there's still a step. But for what we're doing here, it's not that important. We could have done this on the belt sander. So this is good enough and it'll finish very nicely. We have the other end of the part to machine. So we're going to put a little bit of dicom on it and we're going to move this along pretty quickly. Mark it up, got our little crosshairs on there. And we have to go through the whole process again. There's the wiggler, there's the clamp that gets in the way. Here we're indicating it in, getting the rotary table angle just right. Yeah, just about right. There we are. Dial it in. Yeah. Just let's take a few thousands off. Swing that arc. And yes. The first time I set this up, that bolt for the clamp was running into the quill. Sweep, turn. And those lines, remember, those are minutes of arc. Here we go. I'm taking off 10 thousandths for each one on the X axis. I believe this is our last cut. Look at that. This one actually came out better than the first one. Notice how smoothly it goes into the end. It's a thing of beauty. And we're done. Let's take a look at how this part turned out. We still have other machining work to do. It's a little tall and a little thick, but that's because we still have to do machining and we're going to drill the holes. But for now, our work is done on the rotary table. Thank you for watching.